there are few more things uh, when reading or writing into a file it's important to know what our cursor position is if you recall when we were doing a read line we read first line and the then when we call the read line again a read line magically knew okay hey it has to read the next line means the second line when we call the read line again it knew oh i have to read the third line now how the read line really knew that it needs to uh, read the now the next line so whenever we read some content from a file there is a cursor position or there is a position that is kept and that the python knows okay hey we have read x number of characters or x number of line and simply that's called the cursor position so sometimes it makes sense let's say you read some content and for some reason you want to read it those content but if you call the read line again it's just going to go ahead and read the content of the next line not from the previous line so how do we really deal with some of those situation where you want to reset your cursor position or your reading pointer position back to the zero or back to the beginning of the file or let's say you want to read from the end of the file or you how do you reset or put the cursor back to the end of the file and that's where these cursor position can come really uh, pretty handy so to deal with the cursor position there are a couple of methods which are available to us we have a method by name tell so if we want to find the current position of the cursor we can make use of the tell method that would tell us okay hey at this moment the cursor position is this in this particular file if we need to move the cursor to a specific position within the file we have a method by name seek that we can make use of so the seek function or seek method in that there are two parameters that we need to pass there is a offset and then there is a from offset it's a kind of indicates the number of bytes to be moved basically while the from could have three different values there is a value 0 there is a 1 there is a 2 if we specify 0 as from that indicates the beginning of file that means hey you start reading from the beginning of the file if we go and specify 2 that really can indi indicates end of the file means uh, start from reading start the reading from end of the file and one really says okay whatever is the current position start reading from that to really demonstrate that let's go ahead and make use of some of the file so we had this file uh, that says hello.txt now let me go ahead and add some content uh, to this particular file so let's do one thing we'll just go ahead and copy some of this particular content and we'll add into this particular our hello.txt to make it a little bigger file so now that looks good this line looks good okay and uh, yep that's okay so we have a couple of lines in this file and i went ahead and saved this uh, particular file hello.txt now let's go ahead and uh, write some of the code so as usual we'll go ahead and open this file we'll go ahead and create an object and we'll go ahead and open this in the read only mode so when we specify an r plus which really indicates open a file for both reading and writing in this case we are interested in doing both read and write so i can just say r plus another thing about r plus the file pointer is placed at the beginning that means the cursor position right now at the beginning of the file how do we really verify it's really the case so we are creating another variable let's call it string and we are saying okay f dot read now basically read the first first 10 characters from this particular file once we have read the first 10 characters from the file now try to print uh, whatever we want to do basically so let's go ahead and call this one and once that is done now we are calling f dot tell so now let's go ahead and call f dot tell hey tell me what is my current position and go ahead and store that inside a new variable so we are storing this inside a new variable and the name of the variable we are calling is position once we have stored the current position now let's just go ahead and show me the current position so to see the current position we can definitely make use of the we can do the print on that one so let's go ahead and execute this program before that let's go ahead and clear this one and go ahead and execute this so our system went ahead and printed the first 10 characters from this file and it says we just add and it clearly says okay hey your current position in file is 10 that means if i do a read it will really start from the next character so the my position in the file is really setting my cursor is really sitting on character number 11 so that's where we can go ahead and read now let's say if you want to move back to the beginning of the file we can call this seek function and within the seek function we can go ahead and specify the from being 0 and the offset is 0 now let's go ahead and store that so we are really saying okay hey you know what position is right now f dot seek 0 dot 0 and if this stage if you go ahead and print it should be beginning of the file and if it's that's the case that means we should be able to read the same 10 character again to really prove yeah the cursor is at the beginning of the file and if that's the case let's go ahead and check that now go ahead and clear this output run this program again and as you can see first time we ran this print statement that read the first 10 character 
and it clearly says okay hey your position right now is 10 and then we call the f.c can we reset the position to the zero that means the beginning of the file and that's what this zero really indicates hey now we are at the beginning of file and then we went and read again the 10 characters and you can see we got the same 10 characters the very first time that means the f.c method really worked and the cursor was a reset or the or moved back to the beginning of the file same way we can go ahead and call uh, we can try with a different from instead of using zero i can say one or we can say go ahead and two and again as we i mentioned earlier it's a definitely a best practice once you are done with your file definitely go ahead and close the call the close method on your file that really can indicate okay hey now my file is closed after that if you try to do any more actions using any of the methods of the file object we would get an error that's how pretty much you know we can go ahead and work with the, some of these files that's how we can go ahead and read into a file or write into a particular file